Hello, boys and girls, and welcome to a special edition of Movie Goodness here on the KB Radio Network. This is the review of the latest release from the Rocky slash Creed series. I guess you could say Creed 3, now available in theaters for everyone to enjoy. I'm hesitant to call it a part of the Rocky series because there's no Rocky. This is the first film of the Rocky era to not have Rocky. There's no Sylvester Stallone. He is credited as one of the producers on this film. But if you uh, have seen uh, interviews recently from Sylvester Stallone, you know that he had no part of this film. But yet and still, it is part of the Creed films, the uh, Creed trilogy. Uh, It's safe to say that. And this is a, I guess, semi-spoiler review. I'm not going to go detail for detail in this film, but I will touch in on some things that I have to address in order to review this film, uh, quite honestly. So you've been warned. This, this does contain a couple of spoilers. So at any rate, uh, Creed, Creed 3 which stars Michael B. Jordan as Adonis Creed. Michael B. Jordan also makes his directorial debut in this film. And I'm going to say straight off the bat, he did a marvelous job directing this movie. This was a beautifully shot film. Um, uh, From the boxing action to the drama and everything going on throughout, it was was well directed. So I'm going to, just started off with that. He did a marvelous, marvelous job directing this film. Um, it also stars Jonathan Majors as uh, Damian Anderson. We have Tessa Thompson, Wood Harris, uh, Felicia Rashad also returning in this film. This film is written by Zach Bailey and Keenan Kugler, who I'm assuming is the brother of Ryan Coogler. I'm only assuming because I couldn't find anything on Keenan Coogler, but I do know uh, Ryan Coogler is uh, credited as writing the story for this film, as well as one of the producers as well. Uh, It could be, it could be um, Ryan Coogler's little ghostwriting name. I don't know. I I really don't know. I want to give the dude credit for writing this film, but I I can't find anything on him. But um, this film, I know a lot of people were kind of hesitant with this because of the absence of Sylvester Stallone portraying Rocky Balboa. And I understand, you know, because that kind of, that kind of gave me a a slight trepidation about it. You know, I was, I was kind of hesitant in a sense, like, okay, what direction are we going in? Are we are we just poo-pooing on Rocky? And this this wasn't really poo-pooing on Rocky. I, I'll say that. I, I, I wasn't upset at that. Um, You can clearly feel the absence of <laughs> Rocky Balboa. Um, did it hurt the film? It did at moments. At certain moments in the film you kind of wish that Rocky was there and we didn't have that. So I would say that, yeah, the film is kind of hurt by the absence, but at the same time, it didn't take away from this film because this film is truly set apart from the franchise. This is the, it's own film. Other than the fact that Adonis Creed is Adonis Creed, uh, (laughs) There's no real connection to the Rocky franchise. Uh, I think Rocky was mentioned once, and I mean mentioned. <laughs> it was like a, a throwaway line towards the beginning of the film, well, maybe the end of the first act, the start of the second act, we heard Rocky's name in just a throwaway line, and that was that, you know? <laughs> It was just to use as a metaphor or, or, or however they used it in the film. And actually, that's what really 
reminded me that this was part of the Rocky franchise. Because up to that point, this was an Adonis Creed film, which is not a bad thing. I'm just saying. So <laughs> I just, it was just at points, like towards the beginning of the third act, or maybe in the middle of the second act, that you kind of wish you had Rocky's guidance. You know what I'm saying? To kind of guide uh, Adonis in this story. Let me dive into Jonathan Majors in this film. Jonathan Majors portrays the character of Damian Anderson, a.k.a. Diamond Dane, who was the best friend of Adonis Creed when they were younger. And uh, Damian was this Golden Globe champ, uh, Golden Globe, Golden Glove champion. And uh, the future was bright for him, you know, as a boxer. And uh, Adonis really wasn't a boxer, you know. He was more or less uh, just uh, assisting Damian, you know, in this Golden Glove tournament. And, you know, one thing led to another. Damien went to jail. I'm not going to get into the, I'm, I'm going to address how he went to jail a little later when I get to my negatives. Um, And basically, uh, uh, we we arrive about 20 years later and Damien is out of prison. Adonis has lived his life. He's been a champion. He retired on top. He, he's uh, uh, promoting uh, this young uh, uh, fighter as champion, who is the champion right now. And, you know, life is good. He has his wife. He has his child. He's living in mansions. He's driving Rolls Royces. He's living the dream. Whereas we have Damien, who's fresh out, and <laughs> Adonis is basically living his dream. Everything that he wanted to do in his life, Adonis is living lived it or living it and Jonathan Majors played this role with such reserve yet menace and anger you know it was it was it was more of a silent anger he wasn't yelling and screaming and acting like like for instance to use an example to keep it in a rocky uh, uh frame of mind you go back to rocky 3 when you had Mr. T Mr. T was just this uh, bigger than life figure, you know, this loud, boisterous, you know, uh, 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 nobody can beat me, you know, <laughs> you know, what you're going to do, Creed, you know, that, that, that character over the top, <laughs> it's over the top. Jonathan Majors didn't, he was very reserved and he played it. He wasn't, he was this film's antagonist, but he wasn't the villain. And you understand his story. I was actually, sadly to say, rooting <laughs> for Damien. I was rooting for him at certain points in his film. Even though Adonis Creed is the hero of this story, it's his movie. It's called Creed. <laughs> but I'm rooting for Damien in this film. And... It's all because of the performance of Jonathan Majors. This should be no shock to nobody by now. If you've seen anything Jonathan Majors has been in, you know that he he excels in every single film that he's in, and he outperforms everybody in the film that he's in. I don't think he do it on purpose. I don't think he does that to poo-poo on the other actors <laughs> on set, but he's just that good. He stands out in whatever it is and he did it yet again here my other big love of this film was the story the family dynamic with adonis and his wife played by tessa thompson and their daughter who is hearing impaired and i love the use of als i love the use of uh you know her being bullied in school and he wants to teach her to fight, yet uh, uh, Tessa Thompson don't want to teach her daughter how to fight. And uh, it, I love that relationship because I saw I saw remnants of me and my family in there, you know. So it kind of it kind of hit home, I guess you could say. Uh, 
as I said before, the fights, the fighting in this film, it wasn't the best fighting in a Rocky, uh, Rocky film or a Creed film for that for that matter. But it was good. I thought it was uh, at points some of the best. It, it, I love the camera movement when Michael B. Jordan used the tight close-ups of the fights. It was great. I loved how he used it. And um, I read somewhere where he said he was influenced by Japanese anime. And I'm, I'm into anime, so I could see where that influence came from in some of the chore- uh, choreography of the fight scene. So it, I love that uh, it was used in that matter. It, it looked great. It kind of gave it a more cinematic look. You know what I'm saying? So I, I, I did enjoy that. Plus, you got to do something different. We, we, This is the, what, eighth film or the ninth film? In the Rocky slash Creed franchise, you, you know, we just seen every type of fight there was. We just seen a boxing match. We just seen a, a full out brawl. We just seen even remnants of wrestling, <laughs> you know, in these fights. So you you know you gotta you gotta kind of sauce it up. And I I think this was a nice little direction to go. My final my final positive is Michael B. Jordan. Michael B. Jordan as a director and as the lead actor in this film. The direction was spot on also for a first time director. I think he did a marvelous job directing this film. There was a lot of story to tell and he told it. You know what I'm saying? It it wasn't uh, uh, hard to follow. Everything, Everything flowed, I felt. Yeah, there was some little bumps through, uh, throughout the way, but that was to be expected. And I really didn't, it really didn't detour from the film. So, uh, yeah, the direction was great. Now, him as an actor, this is the second best performance I've seen from Michael B. Jordan. The first being Eric Killmonger in Black Panther. This is the second best performance I've seen from him. And it, it could rival Killmonger, honestly. It, it was that good of a performance. Um, and it's no secret. I have a big thing about Michael Jordan and his acting. Not that he's a bad actor. I just feel he plays the same character <laughs> in every movie, even though it's a good character. Don't get me wrong, but it's the same. But he, even in this film, a character that he, that he has played two times in the past, he bought something different to this role, you know? And I've, I appreciated it. He really, really did a great job um, as far as the acting, showing emotion. I really was uh, uh, invested in him in this film, even though he was a little overshadowed by Jonathan Majors. But <laughs> he, he uh, Jonathan Majors does that to everybody, so no no fault to him. But uh, a great job. Now let's let's dive into some of the negatives, and it, this film does have negatives. Uh, I hinted to, and they're they're not negatives in a sense where, like, like your average film, I guess you could say. And it's kind of I, I feel bad bringing this stuff up, but just for me, I felt the kind of way. And and it, w- the thing was, at least one of them was. What happened to Dame and Adonis when they were kids and why uh, uh, Damien went to prison? Now, I get all that. The reasoning behind that was valid, but it was dragged throughout the film. And I, I kind of felt like I was mis- misled for a majority of the film until, uh, film until we got to the end and we heard the whole story. Now, the problem was when we finally got the whole story, we saw the whole story. <laughs> we saw the whole story in the beginning in that flashback. But the way the film was set up, it was like insinuated that there was more to that story why he went to prison. And no, it wasn't. <laughs> there wasn't. And I was kind of left like, huh. It's just, <laughs> there wasn't any more to that. 
<laughs> you know, it, it just left me like, oh, my God. I, I, he was in prison so long, I thought somebody died. But nobody died. But if they did, they didn't mention it. So <laughs> that's that's the part where I'm like, well, this this kind of doesn't make sense to me. <laughs> that doesn't make sense. I, I, I felt... I felt like uh, they just left me holding the bag there, and I, I didn't like that too much. Um, the character of Marianne, who is Adonis Creed's stepmother or mother, you know, she she treated him like a son. She loved him like a, a, a her actual biological son, and she, he loved her as if that was her his biological mother. So that that. I hate to put step on it, but in any event, I love Felicia Rashad. Uh, this character was wasted in this movie. <laughs> it was a waste. Uh, was hoping, wishing, and praying for more, but it wasn't. Uh, Felicia Rashad was in two scenes. Well, three, technically. Three scenes, and it was... <laughs> <laughs> it was I, I I couldn't get emotionally attached to her in this film. Now she was in the previous two Cree films. I, I fully acknowledge that, but in this film, really couldn't get attached to her. We just get here and we find out that she she's had had a stroke in the past uh, between the two films, and you know there's a fear that she'll have another one or whatever might be more severe and this is where i'm gonna go into the spoiler the once i guess the one spoiler i'm gonna go into well it's two of them but this is the first one um that she dies the character of marianne dies in this film and that's that that's that and it wasn't any death to kind of motivate adonis to fight again you know <laughs> it was just a death just to have a death in the movie and it it carried zero weight and i didn't i i was like okay <laughs> actually to be honest with you when she popped up on screen because i had forgot you that, that she was even in this film when she showed up i was like oh she's gonna die in this <laughs> and when they mentioned the strokes and everything it just confirmed it I'm like oh she's gonna die so it did it just did not have the impact that i i thinking that they wanted us to have in it. And so that was a waste. My second spoiler is the end. And I'm not going to tell you what happened at the end, but it was very, very anticlimactic for me. As much as I like the fight, it, and I like the symbolism in the fight, it wasn't a rocky final fight. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Y'all know all the the old Rocky films. Now, you can say what you will about all those films. They're cheesy. They're paint by numbers, whatever. That final fight, everybody's in. You're all in on that fight. And this fight, it just came. It was like, okay, here we go. You build up this movie. We're, we've been sitting here for an hour and a half, two hours. Let's go. Ding, ding. And it was... Just like whatever, you know, <laughs> it just did not have, once again, did not have the weight. And I don't know if that was a, a tribute to the writing or what, but it just did not have that same impact that I got from the previous Rocky films or even the Creed films. Uh, so that was kind of disappointing. Uh, the lead up to the fight, how Damien became the champion. With only one fight. This was his only fight. His only fight, and he fought the champion and beat him. So he's 1-0, and oh, and he's the heavyweight champion of the world. There's no way. And it, this, this, is, this is me as a boxing fan. Now, the film goers who aren't into boxing probably can look at that and be like, okay, that's cool. But if you're into boxing and you know how boxing works, <laughs> there's no – that is – utterly impossible uh so that kind of put me out of it how him uh him being adonis and damien end up fighting impossible <laughs> it 
okay, I challenge you. No problem. That that was the fight. <laughs> you know, in boxing, you have to go through the WBA, WBC. You got to get it sanctioned. You got to go through all this. And I, I, it's no way. <laughs> There's no way you could go through, just say, oh, I want to fight you. No problem. Let's go. Meet up at the <laughs> meet up at the arena. But, uh, you know, you got to sometimes suspend disbelief when you watch movies. And, uh, you know, I get it. But it just, it was just too easy. It was way too convenient at times how, how uh, certain things came about. And th- that's what I got to ding. I got to ding those things. And those my only that that's it. Um, other than that, film was great. I it, it, it made that sound like, but it was great. It really was. It it's it stands up as a Rocky slash uh a a a Creed Creed film. Um, actually, you can put it up there with the Rocky films. It it was pretty good. It was pretty good, and I'm really impressed with michael b jordan's direction in this film if anything if i take anything away is michael b jordan's direction i i enjoyed it he looked like he was born to direct i cannot wait to see what he has in store for us next and of course jonathan majors what what can i say <laughs> the dude is awesome he is awesome in everything that he is in anyways creed three Currently in theaters, directed by Michael B. Jordan, starring Michael B. Jordan, gets a letter grade of a B minus. Awesome job, awesome film. I can't wait to watch it again. This is one of the uh this is probably the first time I can look at a Creed film and I'm I'm ready to watch it again. I, for reasons, if you want to know my reasons why it's hard for me to watch the other ones again, go back and watch uh or listen to the previous episode episodes of movie goodness. And when I talked about Creed <laughs> and you, you'll know why it's hard for me to go back and watch the other one, but I would, I would definitely sit down and watch this again. Awesome. Awesome job. I would like to know how you feel about it. How did, did, did you watch Creed did Creed three rather? And did you enjoy it? Let me know. Email the show KB radio podcast at gmail.com. Also, look me up on Twitter at KB Radio Network and on other social media platforms. Just look up the KB Radio Network. Everybody, don't forget about the five stars, the reviews, sharing the show, subscribing to the show. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, wherever you are currently listening to the KB Radio Network. Thank you for joining me for this review of Creed 3. Can't wait to speak to you again. Until then, I want you all to know that I love you. Continue to love one another. And until we speak again, you all be blessed.